Hi, I'm Beth from Restyle Pieces Boutique. Welcome back to my channel. I'm glad you could join me today. I'm going to take this thrifted dresser that I got a great deal on at Goodwill. It's solid maple. It has a lot of work it needs on the outside of the body, but it's clean and solid, and I'm so excited for you to see what I do to it. So if you want to see this makeover, stay tuned. Okay, we're gonna dive right in here. I found this dresser at Goodwill. It was super cheap, but it is solid maple in great condition. It just needs some things filled, like these buttons that I took off. You can see the hardware has scratched up pretty well, and there's some other little things to fix on it. So I started, first of all, when I do my pieces, the first thing I do is to, even before I clean, is to take off my hardware. So I'm taking off this old, hardware. I do not like this hardware. Some people call it Batwing hardware, <laughs> Chippendale hardware, whatever, but I don't like these, so I'm taking those off. Um, I also filled the holes on the top because we're going to replace them with knobs. I also am filling those little button holes there. I use quick wood. It is a quick drying epoxy. I wouldn't say quick drying. I usually let it dry overnight and then I sand it down. Um, here I'm cleaning out the inside. I always vacuum out my pieces well. Then I use crud cutter. I've put it in a different bottle, but it is crud cutter. And it takes off all the dirt. It degreases. It just gets your piece clean. So when you go to sand, you don't sand any of that dust or dirt into your piece. And look at the underside. So gross. I always like to show this because it is with great pleasure that I uh, vacuum that off. Then after that's all clean, I take my, just plain water and I rinse it because you want your cleaning agent cleaned off before you prime or paint. This piece on the bottom, uh, the back panel was a little tattered. So I wanted to just even it off. So I took a hacksaw and just went across the whole bottom of that piece and then sanded it smooth. I took my Festool um, five inch orbital sander and I'm sanding off the top of this to bare wood because I do want to do a blended stain on it. And I know some people have been asking me to see how I do those blended tops and you're in luck because I'm going to show you in this video. And just for the sake of time, we're going to speed this up so you don't have to watch every little grit change. Uh, that I do with my sander and it takes a while. I even skipped some of the middle part so you could just see the very end and see this beautiful top. I love sanding to bare wood and seeing all that grain and that beautiful maple. I love the color and the grain in this piece. Now I'm gonna move on to sanding the drawers. And of course, I'm gonna speed this up too. So I'm using my surf prep sander and I use the paper on the flat parts, but now I'm using the um, half inch pad. It's a squishy pad of sandpaper to do all the curved parts and the edges of the drawers so that I don't mess that up. Um, so after I've sanded it, I clean it up. I'm taping up the hardware holes so that when I uh, paint or prime or top coat that I don't get anything in those drawers because I don't want overspray in my nice drawers. I don't always do this, but since these are drawers that are not flush with the front of the dresser, they have lips on them, I've decided to just spray them outside of the dresser instead of spraying them inside of the dresser like I normally do. And so I'm covering up with this blue scotch tape plastic. It's an all-in-one and I'm just putting those over my drawers to keep those protected. Here I'm using a Bondo Spot and Glazing Putty to fill in some of these little nicks and dings. 
Oh, little nicks and deans? Hello! We have a lot of little nicks and deans. Dings. So I call this uh, chicken pox. I'm giving my piece chicken pox. So when I sand that all smooth, that, that surface will all be a nice smooth surface for my primer and my paint. Here again, I'm using that same roll of scotch tape and plastic to tape off the top of my nicely, freshly sanded top. Um, I really don't want to get anything on it when I'm spraying. I make sure and get all the edges underneath that I've sanded and smooth that down, press that tape down really well so I don't get any overspray onto my top. So you can see that the tape is only on that one side when you roll it out. So I just got out some frog tape. I made sure I cut it long enough on each side and taped it up on both sides. Now here I'm using a roller to uh, apply my Ben Primer, shellac based primer that helps with bleed through and adhesion for your paint to stick and just gives it a nice smooth surface for your paint. I use a roller uh, with Ben Shellac because it is alcohol based and it is really hard to clean out of your sprayer. You have to use ammonia and I don't want to deal with all that. So I really love this product and it's not hard at all. It doesn't take me long at all to roll out these pieces. When I'm using the bin primer, I try to make my cleanup easy. I don't keep my roller. I just put it in my uh, funnel that I use to strain the bin primer when I was putting it into the plastic paint tray. I toss that, clean off my roller frame, and then I take the unused portion of the bin primer and I put it back in the can, and then I can throw away that plastic tray. Easy peasy. Oh, and another thing, make sure you cover your lid, whether it be with a paper towel or an old rag, when you're putting the top on your can. I've made that mistake way too many times, as you can see by all the splatters on some of the things on my workbench and on my wall. Time to sand again. I use a 220 after the bin primer has dried thoroughly. I usually like to wait an hour, hour and a half before that's all good and dry in all the places. I again use the flat sandpaper and the sponge on the more curved parts. Again, the reason you do this in between coats of primer and paint or paint coats is to ensure that you have a nice smooth finish on your paint job. And don't forget to wipe off all that dust. In order to give my piece a finished look, I like to use my DAP fast dry caulk and I like to caulk those uh, seams there at the bottom of the dresser. So I use a damp paper towel, I fold it into fourths and then I apply the caulking. I use a wet finger to run that across the caulk and then I clean up any areas with my wet paper towel. Now, some portions where I had sanded down a little bit farther um, still have some bleed through, even after I use my Ben Shellac primer. So I'm using this Ben Shellac spray in a can, it's de-waxed shellac, to take care of those little pink and red spots that you see because that is called bleed through. And if I was to paint over that, it would come through my paint, especially you can see it under lighter colors. So I make sure I open the garage door, which you see I haven't done that yet. 
and I just realized it a little bit after. So I ran to open the garage door and so that I have some air because it is very strong. And I also have my respirator mask on. Um, so you can see there, I have my respirator mask on and I'm just going over a lot of the areas or if I'm in doubt, I just go over that area too, uh, where I see any bleed through. On the drawers, I had quite a few spots, so I just went ahead and covered each of the drawers with my shellac spray. And now it's time for color. I'm so excited. Um, I'm using Sherwin-Williams Emerald Urethane Trim Enamel Paint in the color Portsmouth. Um, it is a beautiful bluish grayish with a tiny bit of gray or green undertones. Um, so I make sure and mix that up well. I do add water to my paint so I can get it to run through my sprayer properly. Uh, there are, there's something called a viscosity cup that will help you with that, but I just eye it now because I know about the thickness or the, or the thinness that I need. I do strain my paint to keep those um, goobers from coming through on the paint anything that's in the paint that I don't want on my piece. So, so here I'm testing uh, my spray pattern. You wanna make sure you have the proper amount of paint coming out so you can change your flow and the air pressure that's coming out. And you'll know after a while, you just have to play with it for a while and then you'll get used to it. So for the sake of time, I am going to be speeding this up because you can see, I mean, it's quicker than brushing, but I am going a little bit slow right through here and you don't want to watch all that. So we'll be speeding up. Notice even though it's cold outside, I do have my garage door uh, propped open a little bit and my fan blowing outward. That really helps and it doesn't take me long to spray this and so the garage stays warm enough because I have a heater that it's fine when I spray and I can close it afterwards. Okay, this next part, I forgot to film me blending the top. So I've used this piece of pine, I've pulled it out and I'm going to demonstrate what I did on the top. I'm using the Lily Moon Old Smoky Gel Stains, my water bottle, a nice brush. Um, these are in the color Wooden Barrel and Natural Cork. And I'm going to use those together to um, get the blended effect. Gives it a little more dimension on your piece of wood. Oh, and also my sponge to blend it at the end. If you have any questions on this process, if it goes too quickly, please leave me a question in the comments and I'll try to answer it as best I can. So I have misted down my surface. So that gives me a little bit longer to work with these water-based gel stains. And then I'm just drawing some lines and going back and forth on my piece of wood with the darker color and then with the lighter color. There's no method, um, just kind of mixing them together and each time it comes out a little bit differently, but it's always beautiful. Now you see me misting my brush to get my brush damp, and then I'm just going to go back and forth and cover the entire piece. I just wanna make sure it's covered so that then I can blend it. Okay. 
Once that's covered, I take my sponge and I just go back and forth in long strokes and blend it all together. So using that same technique, this is my top of my piece. Um, you can see the back strip there that I'm going to kind of sand out. But look at that green, the beautiful green, the dimension, and you'll be able to see it a lot better on the final product. Here I'm using a 220 sanding sponge and I'm just knocking down any little pieces of uh, stain or anything that's not smooth on the top of the surface because again, I want it to be as smooth as I can get it. And I'm going to use um, a natural stain and finishing oil for the top. This is Fusion Stain and Finishing Oil in Natural. It looks really orange, but I'm gonna put it all around the top. I'm gonna spread that out and then wipe it back. It just gives it more sheen and it gives it a little extra protection. This is an oil-based product. You wanna make sure you stir it well, a lot. You don't wanna shake it or stir it too vigorously, but you just wanna make sure all that is stirred up. So as you can see earlier, I showed you a little sponge brush that I'm going to use so I can just throw that away again so I don't have to clean that. Now at this point, you would be thinking, oh my gosh, it's so orange or yellow. My piece is gonna turn out orange or yellow. No worries, you get it all spread out. And then when you wipe it off with this paper towel, it turns out beautifully. And it brings out that wood grain and the colors in that stain. Again, look at that finish. That sheen is beautiful. It's reflecting the light. It was a little more of a matte finish before, which is fine if that's what you want, but I wanted a little more sheen on this piece on the top. So I left that to dry overnight, and the next morning I decided that I would work on the drawer liners. So I measure my sides and my back of my drawers, or the width and the length, and then I cut the paper just like a quarter of an inch larger, and then I apply it on the inside of the dresser drawers. I only unpeel about a foot of the uh, paper when I first put it in so that I just have a little bit to stick to. And then if it doesn't turn out exactly like I want it the first time, like it did here, then I can pull it up real quick and not have to have that old, whole piece uncovered. Now I slowly remove the backing as I press down in the middle part with my hand, and then I use my smoothing tool to smooth all of the bubbles and any small wrinkles out, working from the inside to the outside. This large and thin uh, putty knife I use as a guide. I put it up against the side and I use my razor blade to remove that excess wallpaper works marvelously. It's now time to add the hardware. That's the final step. So I apply the knobs to the top drawer and then the other hardware, uh, the adjustable hardware that I bought for the rest of the drawers. So here I'm using Howard's Feed and Wax to nourish the wood on the outsides of the drawers, the glides, the slides, and the insides of the drawer base. So just a little reminder of the before and now the after. Oh my goodness, I love how this turned out. That blended top, that paint color, the new hardware, the drawer liners, it all works so well together to give such a beautiful finished product. So with time and effort, 
you can learn how to do this too at home. I make these videos so that you can see what's possible. And if you work hard, you can do it too. Oh my gosh, I love it so much. The hardware, the blended top, that color is just beautiful. I am so excited that you were here to watch. If you would like to subscribe to my channel, I would really appreciate it. Um, I'm working toward um, 1,000 subscribers this year. So help me out, subscribe, and comment on the video today. If you have any questions, let me know and I'll try to answer those. So thanks for joining and I'll see you next time.